Pokemon TCG prices are falling. People who were buying in six, seven months ago are in severe regret. Let's go ahead and talk about it. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Gym Leaders Podcast, where we talk all things Pokemon TCG. I'm Travis with TCG Funhouse. And I'm ASX with ASX TCG, ready to talk about some falling prices today, you guys. It's absolutely insane. We have been seeing a market correction unlike any other market correction that I have seen in a very long time with a lot of the more modern cards. And we're going to try to figure out why exactly we think these prices are falling. We're going to look at a few examples for some of these modern sets and uh, really just just go from there. So like ASX, have you noticed falling prices? Oh my gosh, like all over, um, almost every set. Um, there are a couple of sets where we're not really seeing too you know, bad of drops, but there's some sets that are actually pretty surprising uh, to me that have dropped significantly. Yeah, and it seems to be uh, uh, you know, a lot of the sets where they told us that they were going to start printing more in the Sword and Shield era, uh, a lot of the sets from like X and Y and even like early Sun and Moon are really kind of like holding steadfast and even going up in price. But the printing, I think, is really starting to rear its ugly head and prices are coming yeah. down. But with a couple of exceptions, too, that we're going to be talking about uh, for specific examples, um, everything from Battle Styles to Darkness Ablaze, all the way back to Evolutions, there have been some massive price drops for sure. Um, but yeah, so we're going to actually just, we're just going to start diving right in and start talking about some specific examples. And I want to go, I want to go with this card that kind of made me think about making this podcast and talking about it. I know it's a card that's near and dear to your soul. And I'm going straight to the Charizard VMAX from Darkness Ablaze, which has you know, not even kind of like tripped and fallen in price. It's kind of just, you know, bungee jumped, right? It's just completely yeah. gone off the side of a cliff all the way down uh, to like $40, $45 right now over on TCG Player in near mint condition. And this is a card that maintained value of over 100 bucks in between $80 and $100 pretty much since release until recently. And I know you have a few of these ASX, so how are you feeling about this card coming down in price? Yeah, I'm I'm kind of surprised on this one, honestly. Um, you know, it's the first like variation of the Charizard VMAX that we had. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it looks like a really, really cool card. Um, you know, really great artwork for it. He looks just super mean, you know. Um, and I thought, you know, that was gonna kind of help it hold some value, but I'm I'm super surprised to see it down in the forties right now. Um, you know, it, it definitely hurts, you know, having a couple of them. Um, you know, seeing that price, but uh yeah, it's uh, it's it's definitely a lot lower than I thought it was going to get. It's actually a card that I've not been able to pull. So out of all the pack openings that I did on the channel and even off the channel, we still have not pulled the Charizard VMAX. So, I mean, yeah, it's not an extraordinarily rare card like we're seeing with some of the Fusion Strike pulls, um, but it is still probably the rarest card in the entire Darkness Ablaze set. Now, Darkness Ablaze did get... A new fresh uh, release, a reprint here. So, if, I mean, I just found a bunch, a bunch of Darkness Ablaze booster packs at my local Target over the weekend. And that could have been what spiked this drop. So it did drop about $20 just in like the past month or so. Really like three to four weeks, which is a huge spike. And that could be why. Um, but this Charizard Emax, I agree with you. It's a beautiful card. It's very fierce looking. It's one of my favorite Charizard yeah. VMAX, alt, uh, I was going to say alternate arts, but just artworks <laughs> in general. And I think we are going to be approaching this price to where it's going to be investable. I'm not sure if it's there yet, but if this card continues to fall and it gets into the 30s, right? Or the high 20s, yeah. mid 30s area. I don't know if it's going to fall into the 20s. I, I don't, I just don't see it going that far. But if you can pick up this thing around $34, $35, that's a steal for long-term yeah. investors, like, for sure. Um, I would not pass on this card if it gets to that price point, and I think we're getting there. Where do you think the floor is going to be? Yeah, I think, you know, looking at it, I'm thinking maybe around $40, $45. 
Um, that might be a little bit hopeful. I'm just kind of seeing where it's at right now. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's just so low. And, you know, the looking at how the market is right now um, and, you know, what we're going to talk about with some other sets, it's just, you know, th things are, you know, definitely on a downslope right now. But, yeah, I think, you know, floor, I would say, you know, 40, 45, maybe into the 30s. But you're right. If it gets down there, like, that's when we need to be looking at getting this pull card. Pull the trigger. Uh, yeah, pull the them, trigger. You know, pull the trigger on them the for sure. I yeah. agree. I agree with you 100%. Uh, and we're talking about near mint prices, guys. We're not talking about yeah. lightly played, moderately played. Um, and there is over 100 on TCG Player right now, which is talking about, you know, flooding the market with singles and prices coming down. So, uh, but we're going to transition on to another set that is pretty much in the exact same position as Darkness of Blaze right now, and that's Battle Styles. Battle yeah. Styles has still been everywhere, still super easy to find. Booster box market price is like $90 on a Battle Styles uh, booster box right now, which is crazy. And the two chase cards in this set, which is, you know, they've pretty much been neck and neck the entire time, like a $10 difference between the Sleepy Tyranitar alternate art and the Rapid Strike Urshifu alternate mm -hmm. art. They both maintained in between like $100 $120 for a very, very long time. And they have since fallen in the past like 30 to 45 days to like 65 70 bucks the urshifu more like 60 bucks and it's another instance where if you're just patient and you don't buy early buy before release buy during the first week of release you can end up saving tons and tons of money by waiting for like wave three wave four all these yeah. extras all these extra stuff right like these uh boxes that are getting battle styles in them um, collection boxes, collection tins, the the EV tins that were just on sale, all had uh, battle styles in them. I think the Target Black Friday ones had a battle styles pack inside, and they're still out there. Now, there's not as many of these out on the on TCG Player. There's about 60 Titars and about 65 Urshifus, which is quite a bit less than the Charizard. But I can really see, especially the Urshifu, coming down in price even more. So if you guys don't know, I just put out a video on Friday talking about cards that I think are not worth investing in or actually going to fall in price. And I think this Rapid Strike Urshifu is one of those because it's actually a popular deck to even play right now. So people are using the Rapid Strike Urshifu and it will fall even more as soon as it rotates out of meta and I think will be similar yeah. to the price of the Single Strike Urshifu um, and stuff like that. So yeah, what do you think? Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with you. I think the Urshifu is hanging on right now, like you said, because it's it's currently a very playable card in the meta. Um, I think another reason maybe why this price is coming down is they actually just came out with those, um, I can't remember what to call them, like the theme, not the theme decks, but the, the, battle like the decks. arena battle decks. Yep. Yeah, yeah, they just came out with, uh, you know, a rapid strike and a single strike Urshifu. It's not these awesome alternate art cards. Um, you know, but it's still the exact same card as, as the regular VMAX. Uh, so I think that could, you know, kind of be bringing the price down as well. Um, the Tyranitar is a little bit interesting to me. Uh, I agree. Because it is, you know, definitely more of a fan favorite. Um, you know, looking at the card, it's it's not a super, like, fierce-looking card or anything like that. You know, he's definitely, you know, looked like me after Thanksgiving dinner the other day. Um, you know, <laughs> so I, I don't know if... <laughs> I don't know if, if that has anything to do with it or not, but, uh, you know, I think it's a super cool card. Um, you know that the Urshifu is just not as as popular. I don't think you know it's not yeah. a not a card that you know a lot of people have you know a whole bunch of memories with. It's not super nostalgic or anything like that. Um, yeah. So I think that definitely has has the uh, you know that's why the price is the way it is on the Urshifus. I, I I agree with you there a hundred percent. I am a little surprised at the 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 Titar as well. I thought that that card was going to be a chase card for a very long time, you know, for a lot of people because yeah. Tyranitar is a fan favorite, you know, uh, probably everybody's second favorite pseudo legendary after Dragonite in terms of collecting. Um, so I am very surprised that that card has fallen 40, $50 just in the past month and a half, two months or so. Um, didn't expect that to happen. So, um, but we're going to move on. We're going to move on from some of the more modern stuff and we're going to look at some sets that, are really probably two of the linchpin sets for the Pokemon TCG with Hidden Fates and Evolutions, right? So yeah. I think when a lot of people think of this generation, that's what they're going to think of. They're going to think Hidden Fates. There's going to be tons of nostalgia around Hidden Fates. And of course, there's already tons of nostalgia around Evolutions, right? But people oh, are, are they are going to remember these things. They're going to remember hunting Evolutions and hunting Hidden Fates and... 
you know, Hidden Fates came in at the tail end of this big boom and stuff like that. And the cards are significantly the big, the big, big cards, not the big card, but the rest of the big chase cards for Hidden Fates has really dropped in price significantly over the past yeah. month to a month and a half. And again, it's the same time frame we're seeing these drops in prices, which I'm surprised on Hidden Fates because, you know, these. The, these cards are not flooded. The market for these cards is not flooded. Yeah. There's not a hundred, uh, you know, of these up, 120 of these up. It's not. There's we're we're looking at in particular. I'm just going to list off a couple of examples here. The second most expensive card in the set is the shiny Umbreon, which you know carried 140, 160 dollar price tag. Um, I got some of these graded about a year ago, year and a half ago. Jim Mint 10 and sold them for 380 dollars in Jim Mint 10. Which was massive, right? Pulled yeah, it myself. That's awesome. And now, you know, near mint price over on TCG Player is about seventy-five to eighty dollars on this Umbreon GX. Sylveon GX sixty-two Mewtwo, which has been like really inspired my Pokemon investing stuff, my undervalued cards lists. Fifty bucks right now. Forty-five, fifty bucks for this shiny Mewtwo GX from Hidden Fates, and then Espeon, you know, the Evolutions. 40 45 like it's absolutely insane the prices on these shiny full art cards from hidden fates that were chases for so long we're talking about a year yeah year and a half people chased these cards and they have just dropped dropped in price like what are your thoughts man like my mind is blown at the value of these cards yeah this this is an interesting one um i i didn't really see this one coming to be Me honest neither. with you not um, at all the way the prices are right now, I I mean, it could be a lot of different things. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I think like, bless you, you know, maybe. Oh, thank you. Um, I think maybe, <laughs> you know, people are, you know, maybe a little bit over the shiny Pokemon. Um, I say that, you know, very lightly um, because I no, know a lot of people I think you're really onto something like the there, shiny dude. Pokemon. But I still think you're you know, onto I, something and I, I don't want to yeah, hear you talk it out. Yeah. So, I, you know, I think. We're a little bit over it. Um, I know I am a little bit, you know, because of Shining Fates. Uh, you know, Shining Fates came out and just, I think, wasn't as good of a set as a lot of us were hoping. Not even um, close. You know, and the, the Shiny Hunt just didn't feel the same um, as it did with Hidden Fates. Uh, so I think that could be kind of a big reason. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I think we, uh, well, I know we, we definitely had a reprint. Um, I think kind of around the beginning of uh, this year, yeah, uh, late last year, yeah, the ETBs got reprinted, and you know, I know a lot of people that had never opened up Hidden Fates before, and, and finally got a chance to open some up. I was one of those people. I finally got <laughs> awesome. a chance to open up an ETB. I think I actually got it from you. Um, so thank yes, you I remember that. that. That was cool. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know that that was really awesome. But I think you know that that reprint um, didn't have as good a pulls as people were hoping, as people were seeing. You know, from all of the other, you know, YouTube videos, um, you know, I think that's that, that's definitely a big factor as well. And one last thing I kind of think, too, especially with the Evolutions, because I know those are huge fan favorites. They've been ever since, you know, any of Evolutions introduced, you know, and it's an instant fan favorite. Yep. Um, but I think another thing is uh, the alternate arts that we're seeing nowadays. Um, I mean, just absolutely beautiful cards, beautiful artwork. It's it's you know an artwork on the full entire card versus you know these these shiny cards are you know just kind of like the white or silver background uh, and the shiny Pokemon on them. So you know I think uh, that could have something to do with it as well because uh, those you know you look at evolving skies prices and those cards are way up you know higher than I thought you know they would be at this point in the set. I agree. You know, age. I agree. So you know I think that could be a a, a factor in it as well but you know, definitely think, a, an interesting one I think you're onto something here with with the style of the card I think that I mean yeah. look at all the hype surrounding the character rares right now that are being announced one after another yeah. like people are stoked and yeah. you know both fusion strike and evolving skies and chilling rain and these alternate arts that we're getting are really some of the best artworks that we've ever had and they definitely have you know, pumped up their game on artworks. So looking at some of these cards, like, you know, the Espeon, shiny Espeon GX full art, it's really not that appealing of a card. Now, I do love the bright white silver shiny background, 
you know, with the the color pop of the Pokemon. I love it. I think it's a very unique yeah. artwork and very unique the way that they put it together. But the way that you talked about shiny Pokemon now all of a sudden being oversaturated, I kind of get what you're saying here. And not only that, but talking about how Evolutions are fan favorites, they're oversaturated right now as well. They're yeah. everywhere. You know, not only did we get a bunch of them inside Evolving Skies, but we just got Espeon inside of Fusion Strike. We just got announced character rares. Well, they kind of leaked. They weren't announced. They, they leaked character rares of Umbreon and Eevee and all this stuff as well. So I can definitely see where maybe people are getting burnt out on Shiny Pokemon and Evolutions, yeah. which are, you know, four, four of the five cards that we mentioned here and were some of the chases for Hidden Fates. Um... The Mewtwo still kind of perplexes me because that was one of my favorite cards yeah. for a very long time. I have a bunch of those in my collection, and I plan on holding on to those for a very long time. And the other thing is, we haven't seen this type of activity on the Charizard, right? So the shiny Charizard GX, which is the coup de gras of Hidden Fates, has actually increased in price. And there's about just as many listed as the rest of these, right? So there's 29 Mewtwo's, 34 Sylveons, 36 Espeons, and there's 33 Charizards. So it's kind of in the same boat in terms of how many are on the market right now. But it's gone up. It's at like $350 right now. And the rest of these are just kind of dropping almost half in price like in the past two months or so. So I have no clue what's going on with Hidden Fates. I would love to know in the comment yeah. section, what do you guys think? Uh, is happening with the Hidden Fates prices. I think these are all going to be very investable cards here. I really do. I think all the Evolutions, the Mewtwo GX, the Greninja GX, the Lucario GX, like these fan favorite shiny Pokemon are going to be huge, right? So like this is the first time we got, it's the very first print run of shiny Greninja, first print run yeah. of, of shiny Lucario, si uh, shiny Scizor, like on cards. Like, that's massive to me, and I think they're all going to be very investable if they continue to fall. If the Mewtwo gets into the 30s, if the Evolutions get into the 30s, low 40s, you got to pull the trigger on these things, and that's my thought on that because people are going to remember this. But yeah, let's transition over to Evolutions here real quick and talking about that Charizard in particular. Um, it's down to like 40 bucks, guys. It's down to 40 bucks. This thing continues to fall and fall and fall. And I know I've told the story here on my channel before. Trends are super important. I was able to sell six, seven, I don't remember how many there were. Some of them were reverses of my Charizards from Evolutions for about $120 to $150 a piece back during the boom about a year ago, 10 months ago. And if you think about it right now, you know, let's say I made $800 selling those cards. I could go back and now buy 20 of these shiny Charizards, trade eight char not shiny, but for the Evolutions Charizards, trade eight for 20, man. So, like, that's why trends are so important. What are your thoughts on the falling prices for Evolutions, in particular, the Charizard Hollow? Yeah, this one is, uh, I mean, it, it's interesting because uh, it's a Charizard, right? We usually don't see, like, super big, you know, fluctuations on the big Charizard pull. But, yeah, this one is is a little bit interesting, but I, I think it kind of makes sense right now. Um, you know, for a couple reasons, I mean, this is, this card specifically has been reprinted a bunch of times. So many times. Um, yeah, so many times. Um, and you know, not to mention just, we just got one in celebrations, which I personally think, um, is a better looking card. I like the hollow pattern and, you know, all of the, uh, the texture on it and everything I think is super cool. Um, so I think that kind of has a little bit to do with it as well. That, you know, fact that we just got another one that looks almost exactly like this. Um, and I, I think a, a big point is that, um, you know, XY is, is kind of in an era right now where, you know, it, it's, it's kind of like in a gray area. It's not necessarily yeah. vintage right now. It's not, you know, it's not considered really modern anymore. Um, so it's kind of in a space where people don't really think about it as often. Um, and I think that is, is kind of a bigger factor on why the price is where it's at right now. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you hundred percent. I think that, you know, forever, the black and white era has been in that gray area, right? It's funny because it's called mm -hmm. black and white, but it's been in that gray area <laughs> where it's yeah. not vintage, right? But it did exist before almost 90% of people came back into the hobby, right? So yeah. black and era was probably, you know, the lull of Pokemon TCG collecting. Not many people were really into it. Um, and now that it's back, it's like, 
well, it's not what I remember. It's not Wizards of the Coast, right? It's not vintage. Yeah. It's you know, it's not Gen three where I was still playing the games and all that kind of stuff. It's just it's just kind of exactly. there. Um, and I think X Y kind of falls into that category as well. I feel like a lot of people came back during Sun and Moon. Um, but people started playing the X and Y game, so it is kind of in this weird little bit of nostalgia, but not really nostalgia area. Um, and it's too new to be considered vintage, but it was before the massive printing started as well. So you're not going to see the market yeah. flooded with all these cards. Although evolutions was printed into the floor. It was really the first set that was printed into the floor, which now we're getting with battle styles and darkness of blaze yeah. and vivid voltage. And, you know, I'm kind of bummed that vivid voltage keeps getting these reprints because, you know, I really thought that Vivid Voltage was going to be a phenomenal set, particularly for collectors yeah. and investors. But there's just been so much of it out there. They keep giving us, you know, Vivid Voltage everywhere because people want that Rainbow Pikachu. And a lot yep. of those prices have come down as well. Um, Pikachu is still holding steady, believe it or not. But, you know, all the other cards in that set are coming down across the board. Um, so I'm wondering, you know, what's going to happen with... Um, brilliant star like do you think with the character rares coming out pull rates being good pull rates being bad like what do you think brilliant star is going to be for the market do you think it's going to be great for investors collectors or do you think it's just going to be it, there's so much of it it's not worth buying not worth buying i don't want to say that but you know what i mean yeah no i i think um i think it's going to be good i think it's going to be good for collectors uh, i mean just looking at all of you know the um the Japanese cards that, you know, mm -hmm. we're technically supposed Ugh. to have, uh, you know, in the brilliant, uh, star set. Um, I mean, that's, it, it gets me super pumped up because those character rares are going to be so fun to chase. And there's so many of them as yeah. well. I mean, it, 60, it right? Really, Is there 60 of them? Something like that. That's yeah. Nuts, it's like a man. crazy amount. Um, and I feel like, you know, Pokemon company is really doing a, uh, you know, some fan service here and really giving us some awesome cards, uh, in that set. And I think it is going to be a set that's, you know, it's, it's going to be highly collectible. There's mm -hmm. a whole bunch of cards from, you know, all the character rares. I mean, there's different variations of the character rares, even with the V and the V maxes, too. So, you know, I definitely think it's going to be a set that, you know, we're I think we're going to see a lot of it just, you know, based upon the what we've been seeing with the printing in that uh, here recently. But as a collector that, you know, wants to, you know, finish master sets and things like that, you know, that's that's music to my ears, to be honest. I wonder how hard it's going to be to complete. That's what I wonder. Because, like, you know, the alternate arts right now are the reason why it's so hard to complete a master set, right? They're so yep. expensive. Like, getting an Evolving Skies master set is, like, darn near impossible unless you're going to folk over yeah. hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And same thing with Fusion Strike, the largest set ever printed. Um, now, it, you know, I, I must say... We're not going to get all of the character rares in Brilliant Star. I really don't think so. There's too many. I don't think they're going to give us 60 character rares inside one English set. They'll probably space them out a little bit. Maybe put some in collection boxes. Um, you know, maybe move some towards the next subset. Things like that. Um, but one thing that we've talked about here on the podcast before, and I'm kind of worried about, right? So now that we've gotten an uh, uh, announcement of a Charizard V... Not a Charizard V. I'm sorry. It's a ch regular Charizard character yeah. rare. Something I've noticed is they're kind of doubling down. They're given regular character rares, V character rares, and V Max character rares. Do mm -hmm. you think we're going to end up with not a Charizard alternate art per se, but Charizard character rare, Charizard V Max character rare? Do you think? Because there still is a bunch that they've not announced yet for a set. And Japanese uh, VMAX Climax that's coming out in like five days. Right. Yeah, this is uh, – it's interesting because I just noticed that as well. I was looking through all the character rares and, you know, I, I think it was maybe Pikachu that I noticed first yep. that had like two of the different variations. And I'm yep. like, hmm, I haven't Umbreon. seen a Charizard V. Exactly. I haven't seen the Charizard V or a VMAX. Um, so I think they're saving something there. I, I think it's going to be those two. I agree. Um, I want to say this next point lightly because it was a leak and it was a very blurry picture. <laughs> the gold um, Pikachu. You know, but I, I did see the gold <laughs> Pikachu as well. And that got me thinking, man, a black and gold Charizard would be sick. Right. So I don't know. Right. I don't know what's going to happen, but they are saving. They, they got something up their sleeve. I think that's going to. 
be and absolutely amazing. So, so we know that the Pokemon company is all about making money, right? And we've said this before. They're not going to leave money on the table. So nope. if you don't think that they're going to give us a Charizard Gold and maybe even a Charizard alternate art later on in the season, like you're fooling yourself, right? Because they know oh, yeah. what happens when they put Charizard in this stuff, right? So they're giving us a, a Charizard character rare. We're probably going to get a Charizard V or V Max character rare as well, if not both. And I think you're right, man. Like I, I, I think the gold Pikachu is right. Cause if you think about it, we got the Eternatus gold mm -hmm. and black cards. We got the Zacian and Zamazenta gold and black cards. It would make sense that the next ones they go for are going to be Pikachu and Charizard, who have been so heavily featured in all of the Sword and Shield sets. There's been yep. so many Pikachus, so many Charizards. It would be a complete fail on the Pokemon Company as a business to not give us the gold and black Charizard and gold and black Pikachu in a set. Now... I guess I'm wondering this as a question too, right? So we only know the Japanese releases for VMAX Climax. I wouldn't be surprised if it's not in the set for Brilliant Star. But I, I, I think it's so going to be in something like the UPC, right? They're going to give us something in either the next yep. subset or maybe even just a standalone product like the ETB Pluses, right? Where they gave us the Gold Zation and Gold Zamazenta. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if that's where we get the gold and black Pikachu and the gold and black Charizard. Even if they put them in VMAX Climax for Japan, doesn't mean that's how it's going to come here. How do you think that they're going to roll out a gold and black Pikachu or a gold and black Charizard? Oh, yeah. I, I definitely think it's going to be in, you know, those like the Zashi and Zamazenta yeah. ETBs or the UPC. I could <laughs> easily see them doing another UPC just because that thing sells out like before they even get it up on the site. I don't know how Insane. it happens, but Insane. it's, it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, I, I am almost certain that's how it's going to happen. If it's going to happen. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, you know, they, they want those high dollar items and stuff like that. And, Oh yeah. <sighs> Unfortunately, I think you're right. I would love to see it inside of a set. I think that they're going to anchor brilliant star with the, the Charizards that we talked about, the character rares, um, the Pikachu character rares, the Evolution character rares, and I saw that there's a Rayquaza V character rare as well. Um, so I think that is going to anchor Brilliant Star enough. They don't need to put the gold Pikachu and the gold Charizard inside that set for it to do well. They don't have to. It's going to do well no. on its own just because there's a Charizard inside and now the character rares as well. Um, I was always saying that Evolving Skies is going to be the set for the Sword and Shield era and the best set at this point, I think Brilliant Star might be taking it over, kind of like how yeah. Cosmic Eclipse became the best regular set in the Sun and Moon era, even though it was the last set printed. So, I mean, it's Brilliant Star is going to be absolutely phenomenal. But that being said, I need to throw this out there. It's too soon to be pre-ordering your Brilliant Star stuff from small sellers. Oh, yeah. If it goes up on Pokemon Center, if it goes up on GameStop, if it goes up on Target, I would go ahead and put in pre-orders on those sites because they're it's yeah. pretty confident the earlier you get on those, the better. But smaller, locally owned websites, they don't know their allocations. They have no clue how much they're getting. They're going to try to take advantage of these leaks. They're going to try to take advantage of the hype around VMAX Climax and oversell oh, yeah. and overcharge for their brilliant star. Do not fall for it. I'll leave that there. What are your thoughts on paying early for stuff like that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Do not do it. I mean, I've already seen some sites putting up brilliant star pre-orders, um, which, There's quite like a few. you said, they... Yeah, yeah. They have absolutely no clue what their allocation numbers are. And if they don't know that, they don't know how much they're going to be able to sell. Correct. So if, you know, if they do 2,000 sales, uh, pre-order sales, but they only get 500 ETBs, well, you know, all those people are going to get, you know. Going to get their money screwed, back. Essentially, yep. yeah. And exactly. So, they think they had yeah, stuff and they it. don't. So, yeah. Yeah, I absolutely agree not worth it. Not worth it at all. Always buy from trusted sources. That's the biggest thing. I agree, 100%. All right, guys, that is the episode today. And yes, if you stuck around this long, you deserve to know that we had to re-record it because Travis messed up his audio. <laughs> um, so hopefully it still ended up okay. 
But just to mention real quick, this is the last week to get your entry for the Zation pin collection we're giving away this month. And I have a huge announcement going on for my December giveaway, so make sure you guys stay tuned for that. Hit that notification bell, drop us up here on the channel, guys, and make sure you go to ASX's channel as well and subscribe over there so we can take him to the next level, get those unboxings, some deck building <laughs> videos, and just crush it over there. But before we get out of here, ASX, say one last thing. Get out there and buy your Charizards now while they're low. That's a good point. Very good point. <laughs> See you around, guys.